This is a German film. I believe it's by now about a year old, but it didn't play near me when it first came out. In fact, I only heard about it very recently. And the day before yesterday, my local library had a showing of it. A series of strange events in a village begin with a doctor falling on his horse. The setting is pre-World War I Germany, and at the center of this story are three families. The family of the aforementioned doctor, the family of the pastor, or priest, and the family of the baron, who, being a landowner, employs most of the lower class village. This explores authoritarian control, justice, revenge, guilt and shame. The acting is outstanding. Several of the children are asked to pretty demanding acting and they all pull it off. The characters are well written, all human, credible, flawed. There are a lot of long takes, there are a lot of long static takes in this. In a sense, thematically, things happen but not very much changes. The film conveys a slow and dreary life with the occasional spike in an unexpected event without being boring. There are also a lot of shots with very low lighting. They're not poorly lit, however. In fact, I would have to say, of all the movies I've seen, this is the one that best emulates the sense that there's something there in the darkness. You can kind of sense that there's a person there, or that there's some movement. There's a lot of subtlety to the movie. And not everything is spelled out. With that said, we do get a definitive answer to the mystery, and some are going to guess it. I, myself, kind of saw where it was going. But the point isn't, can you guess who did it? The point is, why they did it. I think that it is an extremely crucial point to make, and that this m makes it remarkably well. We have a narrator in the form of the school teacher. In this film, all of the adult males are referred to by their title. The school teacher falls in love with a girl who's just moved there named Ava. And while he is nearly twice her age, it's an incredibly sweet and beautiful relationship. Right from the very first moment of their first scene together, it all just feels so natural, innocent, some would say. We can recognize so much in the way they are together, either from own experiences or from stories that have been told. In, in the very first meeting, that awkwardness that a lot of American films go for, but rune with hyperbole is accomplished perfectly. The music is very appropriate. There's a certain directness to many of these German films. They don't feel as restrained and as bullied by censorship as many American films do. And at the same time, nothing is gratuitous. They don't show or say anything that there isn't a point to. While the film does look great, I do think that the stark black and white, however effective it is for the entire film, at times does feel like a last minute decision. Some shots do not seem to have been filmed with the lack of color in mind. There are a couple of shots where honestly it's a little bit difficult to tell what you're supposed to be seeing typically because there's too much light. That's the kind of thing you would automatically plan for if you know you're going to change it into black and white. I understand it wasn't shot in black and white. The film is 144 minutes long and it is in German with a little bit of Italian but if you have the time and subtitles don't completely turn you off I recommend that you try to watch this movie. I wasn't bored for a second of it. That was my spoiler for review on The White Ribbon. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.
So the gist of the message here is, in part, violence breeds violence. You know, the children are struck by their father, the priest, and they go on to hurt others. And that that sort of righteous teaching using violence to punish immoral acts leads to this sort of vigilante activity, I suppose you could call it. I'd also say that an important aspect of it is the rot in this village. You know, I don't personally think it was coincidental that the death of this low-class woman was on account of a rotten floor. You know, because the thing with a rotten floor is you might not notice it. If you don't look closely, you might not notice it until someone falls right through it. And it's a lot like that with societies sometimes. If you look really closely, you can tell that something isn't right. There are some people doing things that they really shouldn't be doing, but it can still go ignored for a long time. You know, and we find out that basically everyone that these children attack, other than perhaps Little Birdie, which was probably a bit of revenge on the part of the girl, fever or no fever, it was probably because she felt, and rightly so, that the priest really didn't love them as much as, for example, this bird. Some, not all, animal lovers actually do hate people. This appears to have been true of Hitler himself and, in general, several Nazis. Anyway, essentially everyone that the children harm had done something. Something immoral, something wrong. We found out that the doctor was cheating on his wife, that he has hidden both his wife and his lover, that he has an incestuous relationship with his daughter. I wasn't entirely sure at first what it was with the Baron's son, but I think it might have been that they couldn't hit the Baron directly. They wouldn't have been able to get away with that. So they attacked something he cared about. Which also, in part, had to do with why the daughter killed the bird. She wasn't going to try to stab her father with those little scissors. And that's where one has to wonder what exactly the, the poor retarded kid had done wrong. Carly, I think his name was. And my personal theory is that no matter how much they knew that it wasn't his fault, they might have somewhere felt sympathy for him. He was still not doing what one is supposed to do. He wasn't as smart as he was supposed to be for his age. He didn't behave quite like the other children. So he had to be punished. By their logic, he had to be punished. And that, I think, is really an important aspect of this movie. And I can't think of any other movie that has really so eloquently expressed that. To sum it up, a neurotic urge to cleanse all sin, all evil, will inevitably lead to attacking those who are weak regardless of whether it's at all their fault. Part of the point of the film is that this is indeed the generation that grew up to be Nazis. But, and this is important, the director has also said that it is not meant to be limited to those. It's any group that is like this. And yes, Nazism also had the aspect of ethnicity which wasn't really brought up in this, and Carly, as far as we know, was Aryan and all, but there still really isn't that much of a step from you're not like us, so you have to be punished so that you can be like us, to singling out an entire race, an entire minority, 
simply because they are that race or that minority. And that's where I think this movie is absolutely invaluable. I hope as many people as possible see it, and I hope that it resonates with as many of them as possible. Those were my thoughts on The White Ribbon. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.